All right. Welcome, everyone. This is Delta Penguin again in the programming programming series of going from zero to up and running, hopefully working on side projects. That's the goal. Try to quick start you. Um, let's see. All right. We were talking about arrays last time, and now we're going to talk about functions and what are they. So let's jump to the screen. In our example, okay. Okay, so we have an example here. Let's, um, to keep it simpler, let's go back to just a couple of, a couple of variables here, right? Maybe I'll create the var results again. It starts at zero. Just because that might confuse people if you replace that. All right. So let's say, uh, when it comes to code, and here's like coding like lines, right? And so the program, what it typically does is it'll start from someplace, and then it'll go down line by line. It'll do run, okay, run this, run this, oops, run this line. Okay, the computer processes this and does something. Okay, cool, run this line, cool, run this line, cool and just so on and so forth until it goes all the way to the end. That's generally how the computer program will, will operate. Um, okay, so it goes kind of like a waterfall. It goes it goes down uh, top top to bottom, typically. Um, well, in a case like this. Uh, depends where, how you structure your code, but, but within a block of code, it goes top down, right? Um, before we go much further, let's, this is just simple WordPad, right? It's a text editor. You can sort of see what's happening, but it's also a little hard to see. Enter in a code editing program. How about, actually, okay. temp2. I was doing some testing earlier. So temp2, we'll go to temp1 later. I'm going to create a new file called temp2, and it's TypeScript, which is basically, it's like JavaScript um, with a little extra. But okay, so what we see here, function, let's say main, the main function. Let's see. Actually I don't don't need the equal sign. Alright, that's that's cool. Give me a sec. Okay, so yeah, so this code editor is nice. It's ignore you can kind of ignore ignore above, okay. Yeah, it was giving me some errors because this is not actual code, right? That's why it was giving me the red highlights. So this is nice because it will color everything to make it a little more obvious what's what. And also, you see the little red squiggly, you can see stuff. If you get, if you get something wrong, it will try to figure it out and let you know. So I got rid of it. And so, yeah, it's very, very useful if you end up coding. Use something like Visual Studio Code, um, which is like a nice lightweight code editor. Um, just to help you out and really um, make things easier for you. Okay, so where are we at? We have three variables we're creating, and we're giving it some default or initial values. Um, and, you know, these are comments, and you can see, like, if I'm typing something, it tries to figure out what it is. But if it's double forward slash, the green means, okay, it's being ignored. The computer ignores it. This is just for humans to read. Um, so let's say... This is some calculator program. Okay. So pretend, you know, this is a calculator program. We're running something like, okay, we run we run these two values, add them for some reason, put them into the result. And then let's say later on we're doing some stuff. We're doing some stuff. And then we need to create, let's say, another result. Or create another result, and doing some stuff again, blah, 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 doing some stuff, and then another result, okay? So, what is, um, oh, I gave it a different example before, so let's say, so with this, let's say we're doing something like, you know, we want to come up with different, I mean, I guess I could do it here too. 
Okay, yeah. Now, how did I do it? Sorry, I'd done, I'd done something like this before, and I'm trying to remember my great example from before. All right, here we go. We're going to create, we talked about arrays, so let's use that array. Well, can I maintain the values that I had before? Hmm, I probably could if I didn't delete it. Control Z, Control Z to go back. Here we go. Here's my beautiful example from before. We'll keep the same numbers. All right, so now we have a, an array, and here's what we're going to do. Let's say the program does its thing, does its magic, and at some point it gets some of these values. Oops, that is too far. Okay, all right, here's the example. So the, the, the code program is doing something. It goes top down, right? So it runs this, runs this, so forth. This, then, then this line, then this line, so on and so forth. Okay, and then at some point it wants to add two numbers, right? So in this case, again, for array practice, this is the index. So zero index means it's the first one. So what this is basically doing is Let's see, it's nine plus the fourth one. Okay, zero, one, two, three, four. So the fourth one is the last one in this case. So, and the fourth and the fifth position is also the value four. And that's index four. So this bar result basically does this and then it should give us 13, right? Okay, this next bar result comes by. This is essentially nine plus eight, right? because bar one is here, it's, and it stays this value unless something changes it, right? Unless something gets reassigned to it, it's, it keeps that value. So in our example, nothing's resigning yet. So nine plus eight, so this gives me 17. Cool. And then it wants to do something else here. So let's see, it's nine plus, okay, third index. So zero, one, two, three. So number five, so. Okay, here we go. So this is a this is what should be happening behind the scenes. Here's what the program's calculating, right? All right. While this is cool, you know, there's um, part of programming and programming well is not just getting the program to do what you want. That's a, that's a, that's a factor. Um, you want to get you want the functionality to be there. But you can tell that there, there's like a difference in, um, there's a difference between good code writing and bad code writing, because even though the computer might understand it, good code will um, be written in a way that other humans can understand it. And why is that? Um, there's various reasons for that. It could be like, um, you know, eventually you might find a bug, which means there's which means the program is not working like it's supposed to or the way that you intended it to work. And so if that happens, you need to be able to swim through the code, you know, and right now this is pretty simple, but a code program could be like a hundred or thousands of lines long. And if that's the case, then it becomes much harder, of course, um, to find the issue. But if you write it well, then it'll be easier to track down. Or like if you write some code and then you get fired or you leave the company, you want your, you know, you want the your successor to be able to um, maintain the code or or improve it or you know fix it even when you're not there. Um, so, you know, again, this is English like the code code is like English like, but at the same time, you can tell because some of the things like varnum one, that's just something we created. That name, that tag or identifier for this container could have been anything. We could have called it X. We could have called it, you know, um, I don't know, BB radishes. Um, I don't know. It just came to mind. So, you know, but like, but what what does this mean? Like if someone saw that, would they like, unless it's like a farming program or something, they're just like, you know, what? What? Or like some of the people abbreviate too much, like 
So they might say, like, oh, var num here. And then the next time they say, oh, okay, this is var num. And then someone might say, oh, var number result, number result. And so it's like inconsistent, like if they like name it differently or abbreviate differently. Or if they don't like, okay, you know, these are camel case, which means it's like every word has like upper lowercase, starts with lowercase. Every new word starts with an uppercase. But like, okay, but this one isn't doing it for some reason. So you want to be consistent in how you code and how you name things. And ideally, you know, um, make it clear kind of like what the container is holding. At the same time, you don't want to be like var number to do the first operation on. I mean, you can, but it's just like excessive. And then it's also harder for people to like, okay, whenever I want to use this variable, I got to like either, you know, I got to type it out, you know, oh, let me, you know, let me, oh, so it's not this red line because var number one doesn't exist anymore. So it, it can tell. Um, so it's a pretty smart thing in the code editors. But, yeah, but then you have to be, okay, var number a number to do the first operation. Okay, okay, press enter to autofill, but it's still like a hassle, right? So you want to be like conscious and aware of of trying to write good code. And then another thing is like, okay, even though this accepts ac accepts a number, you know, you can still, or it says it accepts a number, you can still assign it something that's not a number. And so, so you want to be careful of being consistent in that because like, because you know, back to real world, real some digital digital world example. If you had varnum one, it's like okay, you know, again, we're sticking the number nine in it. That's perfectly fine. But then it's at some point in the program, if we're like, you know what, dump this value. You don't want it anymore. Don't we don't want it anymore? Instead, we're gonna put this pen inside this container. It's like, okay, so now you have a pen inside the container, but if you come back and be like, okay, you know, var one plus var two, it's gonna, the program's gonna poop out. It's gonna be like, what, what do you mean? Like, how do I add a pen to the number four? And so it's just gonna crash or break or do something you don't expect. And so because of that, you wanna be consistent in how you set up your containers and try to consistently just put the same stuff inside of it. Um, otherwise, you'll have, you could have issues. And there are ways to get around that. Um, there are ways, it's called type safety. So the type of thing inside of it, you can, um, so like let's say we're TypeScript, uh, we're TypeScript now. So if I do something like this, so it's JavaScript, but now it lets you add types to it. So now I'm saying, even though it's called varnum1, I'm gonna force it to make sure that, you know, hey, this thing, let me, oh, this thing needs to have a number in it. So now it's like, okay, now it gives me an error. It's like, hey, wait a minute, you're trying to put a string and that's not assignable to the type number. You know, you can't put a string inside a number container. And so it lets me know, oh, and so I can see that by like, oh, whoops, I, I messed up. I accidentally, I meant to put that somewhere else. Let me, uh, let me get the number in. And then it's like, okay, now it stops complaining. Okay, got it. So it's kind of like an extra step you have to do to enforce that type, but it'll protect your code and, you know, be better in the long run if you do something like that. Um, and that's called type safety. All right, where were we at? Okay, arrays. So... Um, so you could put other objects into it. You don't want to do that. Um, and it is an extra step. You can enforce type safety if you want. Aside from that, okay, yes. So functions, what are functions? So first of all, function is just basically a block of code that you're reusing. Kind of like how, did we say before? You didn't want to, you don't want to, one of the good programming principles and we're talking about being a good programmer. A good programming principle is to do something called DRY, which is an acronym for don't repeat yourself. So one of the marks of a good programmer, and that's kind of like the ar array thing you could say, like, oh, instead of having like 
five different number or variables or containers. If I don't need that, then let me just, you know, if I don't need them all that separately, then it'd be better just to create one array object with everything together, right, of numbers. And I can give some type safety. I can say it's a array of number. Is that how you do it? Let's see. Number. It's a number array. Haha. <laughs> there you go. Actually, I wonder if this is... Actually, I don't think I need that there. Okay, yep. So there you go. I didn't properly write the code and it fixed it for me. Or it, it complained so I knew how to fix it. So the specific way that you write so that the, the computer can understand it, this is like the syntax of the code. That's what they call it, the syntax, code syntax. But every language is a little bit different, so sometimes you have to like, you know, look it up online or figure out some way to remember it or help use programs like use programs like this to help you out. Okay, but yeah, now it's declaring, okay, this is a variable name, whatever this is, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's a number, it's an array of, of numbers. Okay, cool. But yes, yeah, so don't repeat yourself is a, an ideal way to become a better uh, coder. That's one of the goals. Okay. So what is a function? You know, again, every line is a command to the computer to do something. So one, two, three, four, you know, so these are all just creating containers and I can even, okay, create the, create variables. AKA the digital containers in essence. And then then it can be like, okay, calculate the results or something. So separating things out like this, see it makes it more readable, right? It's like, okay, and for the future now I know, okay, try to set everything up here when I'm first creating the containers. And then, then you can do the results down here. Cause you, you could do it when you're coding, you can do it, um, you know, you can do it anywhere in a sense. Well, not anywhere, but you can move, you can, it's flexible how you, where you position them. So here it gives me a pro error because there's two of the same name. But let's say, instead of our result here, I could put, you know, I could put it up top. I could, you know, put it further down. But if I put it too far down, so if I put it here, it's going to give me, this is fine, but this gives me an error. It says, hey, you're trying to use the, use a container before you created it, use the variable. It's like, oops, okay, okay, that, so this has to at least be above that. But, you know, this down here is better, I think, than up here, because just according, well, at least in my mind, it makes more, more sense for the result to be like kind of at the end. And what the first thing that the user would use was bar number one first, or, you know, of our num array. And so I like to have that kind of sequentially I like to co to order it sequentially like that in the order that you'll probably run into them. It's not a requirement, but it just kind of helps, in my opinion, make it look a little nicer. Um, so, yep, so that's an example of positioning good code and just organizing your things, adding comments to help people know what's going on. Um, aside from that, let's see. So. What is a function? A function is a set of code that you want to rerun. So, let's see. You can have, yeah, and we, you know, we're pretending there's other code in between here and other stuff like that. But between these three var result lines, do you see, do you see something that's the same? Or like, how can we improve this code? And the answer is we can improve it by creating a function. Um, why can we do that? We can do that because this is all essentially, the logic here is basically the same between these three items. Even though the numbers are different, so the inputs, the numbers that we're using, the inputs are different. This one's nine and four. This one's nine and eight, nine and five. And the results even are different, right? 13, 17, 14. If you look at it like from an like algebra or variable kind of standpoint, what you're doing is you're still, regardless of 
the numbers being different, what you're doing is you're basically adding one number to another, right? That's that's true for all three of them. Okay, so instead of having having writing this code three times in a row, and again, it's a simple, this one you don't see the benefit as much because it's just one line, but a function can be any number of lines. It can be one line, it could be five, it could be 10, it could be 100. Any place that you're doing the same code logic is a place where you would you could want to uh, utilize a function, say. And this is also kind of like the power of, okay, this is also like the power of programs in general. Like when you create code, okay, because I could create a code instead of like something like this, right? I could create code like this, one plus four, oops. And then pretend, you know, pretend nothing else existed. Here's my program. Uh, I don't even, I don't even need this. So it, here's my program. All I do is, okay, I need at least bar result. <laughs> I'm getting there, kids. All right, here we go. So one container, and I put the value of one plus four in it. Okay, that, that program is only so useful because, you know, you run it, and then the computer's like, okay, snap, instantly, you know, the answer is five. It's like, okay, cool. But, like, what if you wanted... You know, what if you wanted a different result? Like, okay, what's what's the value of three times seven, right? Or three times six? So you run the program instantly. The computer's like, ha, huh, the answer is eighteen. Oh, cool. But like, you know, for every calculation, are you going to create like a, a separate program for every single one? That wouldn't be very useful, right? So the way to make programs useful is is we code it in a way that it can be, it can give us, it can have different inputs that go in so that it can give us different results out. Going back to the calculator example, you know, again, if this program could only do, you know, two plus four, it wouldn't be very useful. But because we can put any number we want in, right? You can do like seven, eight, nine minus uh, 52 or something like that, then enter, enter, and then you get the result. This becomes, you know, infinitely more useful because there's an infinite number of possibilities that you can add into it and then get the, you know, correct number back out if it's working properly, right? But what makes it powerful? The power is that it's not set in stone. It's like, it's, you know, it's dependent on, it's dependent on user input and it can it can adjust to our question. While one person might wonder, okay, what's two plus four? Someone else, you know, wonders like what we just did. What's seven hundred eighty nine minus fifty two or whatever? So because this program can handle both cases, it becomes useful to both people. Okay, but it's, it can only be useful when it can have that varied input data, when it can change the values. Um, change the values of the input basically the the variables that come in and that, that and that's why you need uh, that's why you need and you want variables because variables is the thing that lets you change that data instead of, instead of having a set function here or set values like what they call instead of hard coding this data in you say okay well uh, I don't know what you know I don't know if the user is going to type one and then four they might type you know, 10 and then 3. So instead, I'm just going to say, you know, whatever the user types in the first time and whatever the user types in the second time, whatever that is, give me the result. And technically, I guess you would have to do something like, you know, you'd have to get that data too. So how do we get that data? It would be something like varnum1, uh, and then it calls the function get the button the user pressed. This is how you would run something like a function call. Okay, and then... Get 
So function call means, hey, run this code. And so that would be, okay, we have another function here somewhere. Let's call it function. Oops. The return, you know. Okay. This isn't actually okay. We're, we're pretending some cool code here to get function or to get the number number user pressed. Okay. So some other some other code logic does that and then it'll return it here. Pretend it's the number four or something like that. So so the first button the user presses, it'll store it in this container one. And the second one they type in, or in the second number they type in, we'll say, will store it in here. And then we add it together. And that's that's the kind of logic you wanna you wanna generate from your program. Okay. Because then then it's then it's variable. It allows the user to type in whatever they want. And then as a result, it can give you, you know, the, the more meaningful data than if it just was a set value. Okay. All right. So let me see. Um, aside from that, okay, so that, that's, that's the goal of what we're going for, right? And in, in a similar way, we can see that even though I'm calculating the result three more times here, all of these lines, this line, this line, and this line are essentially the same logic. You know, again, different inputs, different outputs, but it's basically just one number, add it to another number, boom, and then return that. So instead, let's make this a function. So we're going to, again, in the functions, you can kind of place around different places in the code. But I'll just put it up here since we're uh, um, calculate. Put it up here since the function's up here too. So this time we're going to say, given two values return something back. So let me see. This video might be getting along. Maybe I should. Okay, let me branch off into a second video.